today we are going to discuss about history of internet and uh, today it is, it seems very easy for you all you people to just go and click a link and you get all the information on the internet and not only information but you have your own social network um, id and you are communicating with a larger community and varied community there are so that you can uh, have uh, your contact with other people belonging to different cultures so this is very easy but when you try to trace the history of internet basically it started with telegraph because it was also a system in which messages were sent through electromagnetic medium and but it was limited to point to point communication between two devices as we know that fundamentally internet is also a kind of electromagnetic uh system electromagnetic medium so that's why it started with telegraph and further then radio came then tv came and then final computer came and internet kind of thing emerged so uh, this is uh, how internet emerged basically internet started with two basic concepts and this conceptual things are important you must understand that how uh, people started thinking about such kind of system where you can access others computer you can access you can have direct instant messaging system uh, so this kind of thing how it came into the mind it started with two basic concept when first concept was galactic network uh and lick lider was a scientist at mit uh and uh, he concept conceptualized a kind of computer network in which every node would be accessible to everyone at every another node what it means node means unit you can say that one computer it means the concept was that it will it will be a kind of network where every computer would be accessible accessible to everyone at every other computer it means suppose you are sitting on a laptop you are sitting on a computer having internet connection so if this is a possibility that your net your computer is connected with the network and it means that your computer is accessible to other computers and those computers are lying at all over the world so this was the concept that develop a kind of network where all the computers will be connected to each other So this was the main idea of galactic network, and he published his first paper in 1961, and then paper name was Online Man Computer Communication, right? So this is uh, the concept, and in 1962 he was hired by DARPA. We will come to that DARPA. What is DARPA? And but in 1962 DARPA DARPA was an organization, Defense Advanced Research. project agency the full form drp will come to that uh, in uh, one of the slide uh, but this drp hired this liquider uh, scientist uh, because america understood that yes this kind of network will really help america uh, to become a super power and this is the fact that uh, this uh, computer network has made america super power Uh, and the second concept was first concept was galactic network second concept was packet switching and what is that this concept was given by klein rock right this thing you need to remember that the concept of uh, galactic network was given by liklider and the concept of packet switching was given by klein rock and he was also a scientist at mit and packet switching creates various messages blocks of a particular message and send it through telecommunication network these blocks find its path and travel to the destination computer where these blocks come together and the original message this is how it packet switching means that suppose you want to send a message to a person sitting on another computer what will happen that what will you do you, you suppose you type that uh, i i am in uh, gaya suppose this is your message so this message will be uh, divided into different packets and those packets will be sent through telecommunication network 
telecommunication network is not only one line there are various lines so each blocks will take its own route and after taking different routes it will reach to the destination computer and destination computer will decode that message and that person will be able to read the message you have sent that i am in gaya this is how it it works so this was the idea and again kilen rock was also hired by uh, darpa in 1962 basically this kind of thing has uh, uh, many uh, uh, benefits and the the benefits if you try to understand that what kind of benefit it had uh, having this kind of network we will find that scientists believed that that if we have these kind of networks then uh, for they, there will be two advantages a uh, one advantage is that if a part of network get destroyed it is quite possible that uh, you are sending a message through a network and one part of that network get destroyed right then then also the transmitted message would still reach the destination because that message that message block will take another route and it will reach the destination right Uh, so this is the first advantage and second advantage was it would be a secure path because at no points on the network other than senders and receivers terminals all blocks would be available so the second advantage uh, with this kind of network is that uh, i mean uh, it is utterly secure suppose some of your message blocks is accessed by some other person then he will not be able to read the message the reason is that all blocks will not be accessible to him because all blocks have taken different routes to reach to the destination computer so this kind of system was very much needed at that time because think about the time after second world war that was the phase of cold war right and 1962 was the year when and what is the what is cold war after second world war after second world war it is said that that was the period of cold war and cold war ended after the um, um, after 1989 when uh, ussr soviet union divided into 12 different countries so after second world war 1945 till 1989 वर्ल्ड वॉज इन दी फेज ऑफ कोल्ड वॉर कोल्ड वॉर हुआ था यूएसएसआर और अमेरिका के बीच में ठीक है वेन दीज टू कंट्रीज वर एट द ब्रिंक ऑफ गेटिंग इन्वॉल्व मिलिट्रेली बट दे नेवर इन्वॉल्व मिलिट्रेली रीजन वॉज सिंपल दे बोथ कंट्रीज वर कैपेबल न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स वर देयर बोथ कंट्रीज हैव न्यूक्लियर वेपन्स एंड बोथ कंट्रीज न्यू दैट इफ वी गेट इन टू द मिलिट्री वॉरफेयर it will be disastrous for both of the countries but yes ussr was trying to influence uh, i mean increase its influence all over the world and similarly usa was also trying to increase its influence all over the world and when it happens when what happens that both countries get involved in rivalry and 1962 was the year when ussr became successful in space research USSR USSR was the country who sent manned mission to the space who was the first person uh, who went to the space who was the first person Neil Armstrong Neil Armstrong Neil Armstrong Yuri Gagarin yes Neil Gagarin and Yuri Gagarin belong to USSR so this was the thing which proved that in space research ussr is ahead of uh, america 1962 was the year when ussr successfully launched its artificial satellite and satellite name was sputnik so there were something which uh, i mean in rivalry ussr was getting ahead of america and at that time this kind of things came uh where a different kind of communication system uh the different kind of communication network can be created 
and that's why people got interested america got interested in having this kind of network then uh, after that we will find that barpa uh, came in, into existence and as i told you a defense advanced research project agency this was the name of the agency and it was established in 1957 under defense establishment of usa this was the year of achievement uh, in 1957 ussr launched world's first artificial flight to sputnik successfully the success of ussr in space research compelled usa to achieve something new in another area and they focused on secure command system as i was discussing with you that yes there was a rivalry between these two countries as ussr achieved something in space research usa now uh, tried to achieve something in different sector and in communication system sector uh, usa tried to uh, bring in this kind of research and uh, start a new kind of communication system okay uh, so after that it started uh, darp started working uh, in that uh, area and uh, you will find that uh, in 1969 when this uh, started working Uh, 1969 uh, history was made the date was 29th october 1969 when connection established between two centers and uh, different centers were made for this kind of research uh, computers were set up computer lab were set up at different locations like uh, one center was at st for research institute another was at university of california Uh, right then one at uh, massachusetts institute of technology mit so uh, and they were trying to uh, uh, connect with each other through network uh, so after several trial in 1969 they uh, achieved this phenomenal success and you know the what was the first letter which was communicated through communication network the first letter was l and uh, it was written very uh, so, uh, cheerfully by clean rock that we wrote l and asked did you get l reply was yes then we wrote o and asked did you get o reply was yes then we typed g and system crashed but revolution had begun this was the exact line written by clean rock Uh, the first letter which was sent so he said revolution had begun it means that the i mean the person clenro was trying to send log 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 is a technical word uh, so he was trying to send this word but uh, l and o these two letters were sent and third letter was uh, not sent but yes now they knew that yes communication can can be established between two computers uh, i mean uh, placed at different locations right so after that when it started uh, many host uh, many new networks also and the network name arpa the na- network name of this drp was arpa net drpa was the uh, agency and the network they developed the network was arpa net advanced research project agency network this was the name of this network and after that we will find that various other networks also emerged uh and uh, <coughs> there are some, some networks in uh, united kingdom uh npl network was established that was national uh, physical laboratory in uh, france you will find cyclades this was the also the name of a uh, uh, network uh, cyclades uh, were made and uh, cyclades uh, network was there was made by louis pozen the person name was louis pozen and uh, he made this network then another network was the x.25 x.25 uh, was uh, also a network uh, this was developed by itu international telecommunication union right so this is uh, how uh, it happened uh, then after then world have different networks there are arpanet cyclades npl x.25 mark 1 mark 2 mark 1 and mark 2 was also developed in united kingdom only So there are various other networks. Then problem uh, emerged that how to uh, one network, uh, how to uh, I mean uh, make a system uh, in which 
people in different network can also come together and communicate to each other till now what happened is that arpanet suppose you are a part of arpanet and some person is part of x.25 network then it was not possible that x.25 network and arpanet both start communicating to each other this was not possible at that time because uh, all networks were a stand alone kind of network so when this problem emerged then a tcp ip came right tcp tele uh, uh, what is the full form tcp i think uh, ip is the internet protocol and tcp is also uh, telecommunication control protocol i think you can see it so tcp ip protocol came in and uh, purpose was that with so many different networks a platform was needed to unify them first specification of tcp came in 1974 and tcp ip emerged in mid late 1978 in early final form so by 1978 tcp ip came in a tcp ip is a simple protocol that if you want to be a part of world network then you have to follow that protocol and you be a part of that world network you can be a part of many other network and when you uh, agree to uh, uh, accept this protocol then you can part of the world network and then no matter in which network you are but you will be able to communicate with each other so this is this happened and uh, uh, darp encouraged the development of tcp ip obviously the why darp wanted that all networks uh, uh, could come together and they could start communicating with each other uh, on january 1981 tcp ip protocol became the only approved protocol on the arpanet so this is how tcp ip uh, came in then when tcp ip came the next step was origin of web right uh, web means the internet kind of thing that you go on search engine you type anything and you get the information uh, so uh, this was possible only uh, when all networks of the world Uh, are together then only you will be able to search the information on any uh, available uh, any network where this information is available so in 1991 team bernals lee was the person working at cern cern is a uh, uh, institute at france so he was the person uh, who released a public free of cost a graphic browser called it the world wide web www the thing you are using right now that is this kind of web network was uh, developed by team berners lee this is important information you should remember this uh, in 1989 lee designed a network of sites that would not contain only text file but all other types of file including graphics also so world wide web, web was capable of searching uh, not, not only text but, but photos uh, graphics all these kind of things can be accessible at world wide uh, of web Uh, right so this was the uh, mm, i mean uh, contribution of uh, team berners lee uh, at the same time there are some other uh, uh, search engines were coming uh, one of one of such search engine was gopher uh, it was developed in usa in the same year uh, when mm, the uh, Uh, www was developed and it was developed in university of minnesota and it is also user friendly and gained initial popularity but as it was a purely text based system so in graphics or video and such kind of thing cannot be searched on this uh, space so that's why gofa uh, uh, remained uh, very much uh, limited to america only and later on www they took over all other uh so such a space and go for um, and did not uh, do well then we find that there are several others uh, uh search engines came uh, internet explorers came in new browser which to like various version of html were being developed mark andersen of usa launched mojack x in 1993 netscape netscape enjoyed high popularity for some years but now has been overtaken by microsoft internet explorer now several other browser are also available free of cost like mozilla firefox opera google chrome so 
it started in 1991 with www and now we have several other uh, uh, search space uh, browsers uh, not only www but several other browsers are available for us now right after that we find that when internet became very popular so the uh, problem is that how to govern the internet so there are several uh, um, organizations uh, which were created to control uh, the internet and to run the internet uh, effectively right so first uh, such uh, uh, agency was icann and the full form of icann is internet corporation of assigned names and numbers right it may, icann is basically uh, an international non profit organization and it is responsible for maintaining domain name system dns uh, the name you find on the website suppose it is a www.indiatoday.in that indiatoday.in this this is a domain name right so uh, this is how to uh, give a domain name uh, how to manage all those domain names so this is being done by icann and since the internet was created it was in the hand of us government uh, but when it crossed the us border now various other countries become part of internet then uh, countries started uh, questioning uh, america that why you you are controlling internet uh, let it be free uh, why you assign name and numbers why you have all the servers why you control internet so when this uh, questions came then what happened that uh, america uh, make this icnn as independent international body now icnn is an independent international body and so the management transferred to icnn through memorandum of understanding with us department of commerce now the role of operating dns system was privatized and opened up to competition so anyone any company can now uh, operate uh, uh, icnn uh, so do they have they have to bid for icnn uh, and uh, if they get the chance uh, they can uh, run icnn uh, so now uh, icnn is presently it is uh, run by a chinese company mm. uh, so this is how it is working now people are saying that not only in english people uh, now say that icnn is working very hard and now we will be able to have domain name in hindi also domain name in other languages also so such kind of innovations are uh, being done so why domain name should be in english only why it should not be in hindi and some other languages so this is how this is the area where icnn is now working uh, they are saying that why it is only there are uh, various types of domain name like .com it means commercial website .in in which is this website belong to india uh, .usa it means it belong to usa so uh, .edu it means it, this is educational website uh, right so this is how this uh, this is uh, websites are differentiated now many other things are being done that people are saying that why it is only .in why it is not .patna if website belong to patna it should be .patna if website belong to delhi it should be dot delhi so this this will be more uh, this will become more user friendly users will be uh, very uh, it will be easy for users to understand that uh, which uh, that the website belong to which state or which city so this is where uh, people are working nowadays then second uh, uh, i mean uh, <coughs> body is isoc and the full form of isoc is internet society and it is an basically international professional society open for everybody it has more than 200 organizations and around 20000 individuals as members it has members of around 180 countries and it ensures global cooperation coordination for the internet right so now uh, people uh, uh, this is a, a non profit kind of thing uh, people come together 180 countries are part of iso and they are uh, doing their best and they keep coordinating with each other to make internet more cooperative ietf the full form ietf internet engineering task force right and this is a basically engineers platform designers engineers professionals uh, they are part of this community and it is open for all individuals you can also be a part of ietf if you are engineer 
uh, right so this is how uh, this is uh, being done and last uh, uh, is national science foundation and the national science science foundation came into existence uh, in 1980s and uh, it worked for expansion of internet across the world uh, and uh, uh, many european countries joined nsf net and it became a pioneer organization in pro promoting internet across the world india also joined uh, nsf in 1990 right so national science foundation it is this uh, group belong to america so this is how internet is being governed now come to history of internet in india how it started it is very brief history it is started with ernet education and research network in india it started with education and research network and uh, this was developed uh, in uh, 1987 1987 ernet was started and again it was started uh, by collaboration between undp and Department of Electronics, Government of India. Uh, the person was common people at that time. Common people had no access to the net uh, in ERNet. It was a very much uh, educational and research kind of thing that research uh, educationalist, these people can be a part of this ERNet. So it was started as a pilot program to see the use of uh, internet uh, for education and research purposes. And the result was very much uh, positive. And after that, GIAS came. Uh, GIAS, the full form of GIAS is Gateway Internet Access System. Gateway Internet Access System. Right. So GIAS was basically a commercial net access system. And uh, its commercial net access was launched in India in 1995 by BSNL. BSNL means Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited. At that time, BSNL was a government body. But presently, it, is, it, it has been privatized. And now it is controlled by Tata Group. So VSNL is run by Tata. So at that time, VSNL started this GIAS thing where, uh, I mean, commercial net access uh, was given to the common people in 1995, right? So very late. And at that time, it was a public sector company, as I told you. Uh, but now uh, it is uh, privatized. Uh, after that, you will find that in 1998, uh, liberalization came in and internet service provider policy, ISP policy, you can say, and that policy is being changed. And uh, now private sector can also uh, come into this sector and they can also start the, uh, the giving services to the common people. Then we find that, yes, uh, internet boom came in India and uh, we'll find that uh, internet expanded in India with huge speed. Uh, in 2004, it is said that there were only 189 service providers and in 1992, um, internet users crossed 10 billion mark, right? So uh, it is uh, um, getting very high. Now I think it is around, if you we can uh, attach mobile internet also, then we will find that more than 40% people have mobile, uh, have internet access in India. So if we compare it to China, we will find that we stand second to China and uh, we will remain second because uh, uh, China, uh, uh, technically China is more advanced right now and internet access is very good in China. But yes, India is also doing well in this sector. Uh, so this is what uh, the whole thing, internet uh, history of internet, brief thing. So thank you. Uh, now if you have any question, you can ask.